Okay, all right. So we were talking about trigonometry. We know how exactly um, we make trigonometric graphs. We also know how transformed trigonometric graphs are made, like once we are using reflection, rotation, and uh, stretch, and all of that. So we know that, right? Okay. But what we need to talk about for now is inverse trigonometric functions. Now, y is equal to sine, cos, and tan are basically simple trigonometric functions, and they are many to one functions. Why are they many to one functions? Can anyone tell me? Miss, what the one value of um, y we get two values of x? Sorry, say it again. Miss, like for one value from the y intercept, we get uh, two values of x. Exactly, exactly. And it could be that you get three values of x as well, right? Many to one means multiple values. You are right. Okay, very good. So uh, this is what many to one function is. For example, if I talk about this graph, this is the graph of y equals sine x. Now, some of you might feel a bit weird because it doesn't look like the graph of sine x because it is not the complete graph. It is just the graph from minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. That is it. It is not the complete graph. Okay. How do I make this? Uh, why is it called many to one function? It is called many to one function because if, for example, if I say, one second, like this is not many to one. This is not many to one. But if I talk about the original shape of sine, that is something of this type. And now, if I make a horizontal line, I would be able to see that at this point and this point, the value of y is same, but we have two different x excess values, which are corresponding to the same y value. Okay, this is what we have discussed already. Yes, any confusions with this concept about many to one functions? No, miss. Okay, so we know what exactly many to one function is. Okay, Achha, let's read it further. Okay, if however, we suitably restrict the domain of each of these functions, it is possible to make the functions one to one. And hence, we can define each inverse function. Now, we have already discussed functions. And we already know that there's this condition for inverse functions that the function must be one to one. OK, so uh, just before this thing, when we were talking about this shape of sign, you guys were able to see that this this thing is not one to uh, one to one, it's many to one. And you cannot have inverse of a many to one function. So the idea is that we are going to restrict the domain just so I am left with a one to one function. And when I have a one to one function, I would be able to find its inverse as well. OK, this is the idea. That is it. OK, so for sign, if I keep this as my domain, this is going to be a one to one function. And as long as uh, I have a one to one function, its inverse would exist. OK, so this is sine x. And then we have the inverse of sine x that is sine inverse. OK, how do we make the graph? This is the graph. This is how the graph is made. This is the shape of the graph. And the other thing, we already know that if we have a function, we have its inverse, the domain of the function becomes the range of its inverse function. Similarly, the range of the function becomes the domain of the inverse function. So this is something that we have already studied in functions. And now we are using it over here, right? So any difficulties with this? No, miss. No, miss. Uh, Munja, what about you?
Yes, you need to unmute. I'm not able to hear you. Uh, no, miss. Thank you. Oh, my, my mic was mute. Okay, okay. No problem. No problem. Okay, perfect. So I think this is fine. Achha. Let's talk about the next one. Let's talk about y equals cos x. Now, when I will talk about y equals cos x, so again, this is the basic shape of cos x, right? And again, when I will make this horizontal line, I can clearly see that at this point and this point, I have two different x values, but same y value. So this initially is a many to one function and I cannot have its inverse. I cannot have inverse of a function that is a many to one function. So I need to make it a one to one function. Now, how do I make it? For the previous case, for the case of sine, we considered minus pi by two to pi by two. But can anyone tell me why are we taking uh, the domain from zero to pi in case of cos? Why can't we keep it as minus pi by two to pi by two? Miss, it would become many to one. Very good, excellent, okay. Because mm -hmm. if I make that part of the graph again, so again, this is a many to one function. For many to one function, you're only supposed to make a horizontal line and check, okay. So this was basically the issue. Okay, so for cause it's zero to pi and the range is minus uh, one to one. This is something that we already know. And similarly, if we talk about the inverse of cause, that is cause inverse, this is the shape of cause inverse. You need to keep these shapes in your mind by practicing them like three to four times on paper. And again, some same things are happening. The domain has become the range and the range has become the domain. Okay, so it's other way around. All right, and then the last case, is basically for tan of x. So this is the graph of tan x. And we are only considering the graph from minus pi by two to pi by two, just so the inverse can exist, just so it is a one-to-one -one function. So if you guys, um, Look at it, this is very important. The domain is from minus pi by two to pi by two. And look at the range. Since we know that when we are making the graph originally, I make a dotted line at pi by two like this. This dotted line is made because this curve is going up continuously, 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 and it becomes parallel to this dotted line, okay? So in case of tan, we have the entire y-axis as my range. It's not one or minus one, two or minus two. No, it's not like that. We have the entire y-axis. I'm going down like this from this point and I'm going above from the other point, right? So we have the entire y-axis as the uh, range of tan x. And similarly, this is the tan inverse function. I've made the graph, like uh, this is how the graph would be made. And domain is basically what we had for range. And this, okay? So this is how we have basically discussed uh, functions in the beginning as well. And now we are using that knowledge in trigonometry. Yes, any difficulties with this? No. No, no. Okay, all right. Anything that you would like to ask from this chapter, like from this uh, chapter number five? Because now we are done. So uh, any topic that you guys found very difficult? No, Mr. Or what you can do is just uh, spend some time, uh, try practicing the questions. And if we are not able to do them, then we can obviously 
keep a class for that okay acha now let's talk about uh, the next topic that is series let me go back from here you guys need to practice the trigonometric identities as much as you can because that is something uh, that you can only uh, master at by practicing practice is very important for that let me start the recording